Right, so today I'm going to be showing you how to create this lovely job advertisement website where you can create different jobs, assign details to them and then your homepage will pull them through and then you'll also be able to filter through them with this nice wee search bar here. For this, we will be using the Generate Press Premium theme, so that is really the only must have for this tutorial so i'll drop a link in the description of the video for you to check out i honestly cannot recommend this theme enough so if you're you're here and you don't you don't have generate press premium you will need that for this tutorial just because we are using the premium features before we get started if you wouldn't mind liking the video and subscribing that'd be massively appreciated Okay, so let's get started on this new website then. So I'm going to make this as lightweight as possible. First, what I'm going to do is come into Themes and I will install Generate Press. Installed, so I'll activate it. Then when that's done, I'll come to Plugins and we'll add New and I need Generate Blocks. I'll activate that as well. Next, what you will need for this, like I've already said, is Generate Press Premium. So the paid, the paid version, so when you pay for Generate Press Premium, you'll also get an additional plugin which will activate all the premium features. So I'll go ahead and I'll add that now. So here it is. So I should have mentioned as well, that isn't actually on the plugin browser on WordPress. You'll get that on your Generate Press account. You'll download it from the Generate Press website and then you'll just upload it manually, um, which you can do just by clicking Add New and then upload plugin as opposed to searching for it. So next, what you'll want to do, and for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not gonna bother, but you'll want to apply your license key that you also get on the Generate Press website. That just means that you're able to receive updates for Generate Press, the theme, which is massively important because it will keep your website safe, secure against any threats that come out in the future as the software um, both the theme and WordPress itself are updated. So you want to go ahead and add that. Like I said, this is a local little website for this tutorial, so I'm not going to bother. And you can see here all the modules that come with it. So I'm going to be adding most of the pretty self-explanatory. The only one really that I'm not going to use is the secondary nav just for this website. It isn't actually um, required. The site library, I'm not going to use that either because we're just going to build this from scratch. Um, but that does give you a, a really wide range of ready-built websites that you can use and build off of if you want to start that way. But for this, we're not actually going to do that. So that's Generate Press installed and ready to go. So next thing we want to do is if you come into the front end here and you click Customize, we're going to set up some customization here. Um, we're not going to do too much. I'm not. This video isn't going to really hone in on making a, a flashy recruitment website. It's just going to show you how you can use the Generate Press features to to get you off and running. So um, I went into layout there. We're going to want to come to container. I'm just going to make this a wee bit wider. Um, typically, what you want to do nowadays, I like to set a container with of about 1400 just because um, it looks looks a lot nicer, cleaner on um, like ultra wide monitors. So I've set that to 1400 pixels and I'm going to actually come back into container and if we set the container alignment to boxes and all this means is that the boxes that we use within our content will line up with the boxes in our header and footer as well. So I'm going to come out of container and I'm going to go to sidebars and let's just turn off all these sidebars. I don't want them at the moment and we can just publish that. We will come back in here shortly just to configure the blog but for now um, let's take a look at elements and how we can use them to build our recruitment website. Right, so first blooper of the video, we didn't add advanced custom fields. So all you want to do is come back to your plugins, type in ACF and advanced custom fields, we want to install that. That just allows us to set more fields with a post or a user or something like that. And we'll activate it. Right, so now if we come into advanced custom fields, 
We don't have any uh, field groups, so let's add one. This is just going to group all the new fields um, that we're putting in to our posts. So where you would typically use posts for blog posts, we're actually going to use them to display the jobs that are on the website for people to find. So we can name it up here, let's call it job data. And let's add, we'll keep it as a text. We're going to add salary. And if we click out, we'll see there that's sort of generated salary. We don't really need a default value, so let's leave it as it is. And we can click here to add another field. And this is going to be our location. And again, I'm going to leave the default value blank. So I just want to add those two at the moment. Keep it nice and simple. If we click up here, save changes. And we can see down here, we've got a location rule. So this is going to set to post. Let's actually go into posts and come to categories. So I'm actually going to use the categories to assign what type of job this is. And by what type of job I'm going to use, whether it's full time, part time, or a contract. So let's make a parent job um, post category here. So we'll just make it job, and the slug will just be job. So we've added that, and now we can start filling out some more. If you leave slug blank, it will just make it all lowercase and fill spaces in with hyphens. So I'm just going to do that. Set the parent category to job here as well, and that keeps it nice and tidy and I'll add the rest. So now we've got our three categories here. Let's come back to advanced custom fields and edit the job data. Now we might actually want to use posts for blogs as well. So what we're going to do is change this post type and set it if it's equal and we'll set the post category to check if it's equal to contract, full time or part time. And the reason I'm not doing job is because we're not actually going to set the category of the job post to be job. We just want this job here as the parent just to improve the SEO of the website. It's just a good practice to keep the URLs user friendly and easy for Google to crawl. So that's going to improve your SEO. So we'll just save changes and that's it saved. So we're going to now make our first element and what this is going to be is our actual job post. So let's create one. It's going to be a block because it's going to be a block of different containers and different elements that will appear on the page. We'll call it, oh wow, single post. And before we add anything, let's just configure it because I always forget to do that at the end. So the location here, we want this to appear on posts and we want to set the element type to a content template. And what you'll see here is if you expand this, there's actually pre-built templates all there, which is really handy. But I'm just going to show you how to do this all from scratch. So first of all, we can use generate blocks to add a container. So that's fine. So once we've got that, we can start populating that container with content. So oops, let's click this plus. And let's use a headline. Now for this headline, I'm going to keep it H2. I'm going to click this icon here, which is my dynamic options. And I'm going to choose title. So what that is going to do is that is going to change the text, the actual content of this H2 to be whatever the title of the blog post is, or in our case, the job post. So that would be, for instance, the name of the job. So if it's a software developer, this will be software developer or whatever else it is. We can set a prefix here, I'm not going to bother, or we can set a link type. And again, I'm not going to bother with that. We'll hit enter. Let's add another container. And this time I'm going to add a grid. This is going to be a single column grid. And the reason I'm adding this is because I'm going to have a few details all with the same formatting that are lined up together in one column and they're just going to be like bullet points of information about the job. So let's click that button again to add another headline and this time I'm just going to make it a paragraph. We'll add an icon here. If you click on the right hand side that's one of the great things about the headline from Generate Blocks is it comes with all these icons that you can just fire in. So this is going to be for the location that we set for the job. So 
Uh, where is it? I can't find it now. There should be a wee pin in here. There it is there. Map marker. So let's click that. And if we want, we can scale it up. Let's put it to 1.5. That's a wee bit better. And if you want to, you can set a colour here. I like that. That's quite nice. Made that a wee red colour. So that's fine. And for this, what we can do is again, click that icon. Because this is going to be dynamic data again. The difference is with posts, obviously we don't have a location set in uh, by default through WordPress, but we did add that through our advanced custom fields. So I'm going to open another browser um, tab up here just to show you. So if we come back to advanced custom fields and we go to job data, we created location and that's where this field name is going to come in. So we want to copy that and then we can click this again. Click that icon, select post meta because it's metadata attached to the post. And now we want to refer this meta um, field name to that name, the field name that's given here. And that will pull it through for us, which is really, really handy. Again, you've got the same options you can set here, but I'm not going to bother. So I like that. So I'm going to duplicate that a couple of times. You can just click the, the three wee dots there and do it. Obviously, I do want a different... Um, icon so so let's set the icon to be a wee clock and then we can click this again obviously it's not going to be location this time instead if we select list of terms that will give us the option now to select category so that's fine so then we can click on the last one and this is going to be the salary so there isn't a wee icon in here that i could find anyway that was really matching for the sake of this tutorial though this is all about creating the website so let's make it a beer we can pay you in beer so again this is part of our advanced custom fields and what is it salary all lowercase so let's copy that chuck it in there and that's going to pull the salary through. And the last thing that we need is like a wee job description or something. So that's not going to go in um, with all of that info. What we're instead going to do is click that, hit enter, and you want to select dynamic content. And now we get this nice wee drop down and we can just select post content. And that will show all the details relating to the job that we set. So let's publish it. Bang. And then I'm going to create one just to show you how it looks on the front end. Right, lovely. So now let's come back into the back end and if we go to posts and add new. So in here, this is going to be the title of our new post, which will be the job. So what kind of job we're we looking for? Is that even how you spell technician? Oh, it's no one to know. Oh, I did spell it right. I spelled it wrong there. English isn't my first language, so that's my excuse. So that's going to be the job that we're, that we're advertising. And then here, this would be the description of the job. So you'd put in all your specifications. So thanks, Tasty Careers. Let's bang that in there. And now what we need to do is if you come to the right-hand side and set the category to one of these three. So this is just going to be full time. And look at that. And now you'll see these options popping up, which is the the advanced custom field options that we just set in here a few minutes ago. So now we can specify what the salary is. So it's a text field that doesn't need to be just a number. So if it's pounds, we can set pounds. If it's dollars, dollars. So, oh, this guy. This guy's on big money. So let's set it. So it's going to be 80,000 and the location is going to be Glasgow, Scotland. So we've got the title, we've got the description, the salary and the location. So we can now publish this and let's use this one. Go to the front end and we'll see the wee post popping up here. If we click into it, look at that, we can see how it looks. Obviously, we don't want to let comments be left on it. So how can we get rid of this comment area settings in the back end and go to discussion we want to uncheck the third option allow people to submit comments on new posts so that is going to mean that every new post that we make the comments will be turned off by default this doesn't work for new posts however so if we come to 
the IT technician post that we just created, we can go to quick edit and we can uncheck allow comments. So then we update that, come back here, click it and now we can see that that box is away. So that's cool. And then we can start tidying this up, but we'll do that in its own element. Right, so next what we're going to do is create another element that we can now use to style this archive page. So for that, you can just click elements up here on the top. We can see the existing one there. We'll create a new one. And again, that's going to be a block. And we can rename this to job archive. Again, we'll start it off by adding a container and inside of that container we're going to add a grid and again it's just going to be a single column grid i'm going to expand this navigator just to make it a wee bit easier to see what i'm actually doing here inside of this container i'm going to add another one to contain the category and the date posted they'd be quite nice if they're in line so you'll see what i'm doing in a wee minute so if we can add a headline here and make it paragraph and again click the dynamic options list the terms and it's going to be category just to make it a wee bit easier to remember what it is i've just changed the text but that actually won't show on the front end it's just purely it's a wee bit easier to remember than having terms so you can do that if you want it's not going to make a difference to be honest though now we could put so that's fine so then i'm just going to duplicate this and this is going to be something else that's going to be the post date and I'm just going to leave this as is. And now for this, what you can do is if you click the container containing these two headlines and you come over to the right, what we're going to want to do is set the display to flex because I want these on the same row. Then if we just set the column gap to, let's say, 15 pixels, click the first headline. I'm going to add a wee bit of adding to the right hand side of this one. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. So let's add five pixels of padding and eh, maybe a wee bit more. What I'll do is I'll add 15 here and then I'll reduce the column gap to 5. That's going to work a wee bit better in my favour. Then come back to this headline at the top that we added the padding of 15 pixels to. The reason I did that is I'm going to add a very small border in there. So let's make it this contrast too, which is like a slightly dark grey. And if we come to border size, I just want like a wee separator here to split off these two bits of information. So I actually don't like that that's uh, no symmetrical. So I'm going to come back to the container and I'll make that 15 just so that's even. So that's, that's, ah, it's okay. I'm going to, I'm actually going to make this bold, the font slightly bigger than the other one. So if it's 17 by default, if we set it to 20, and then we make it bold by choosing the font weight. That's looking a lot better. Then align it to the center. There we go. I quite like that. It says we'll add the salary in. Just add another headline. This time outside of that container because I want the salary information to be underneath um, the two that we just added. So I'm going to make that a paragraph. Again, this is dynamic data. You'll be getting used to this by now. And it's post meta and it's a salary. So that's cool. And I'll duplicate this. This time, this is going to be the actual title of the job. So I'm going to make this an H2 and we can change this post meta to title because it's going to be the title of the actual post. So the as in the title here, if we were on a post, which is also going to be the name of the job. This time I want to add a link here because I want somebody to click on the name of the job and go to the actual advert for that job. So that's just, that's just going to be the single post. It's going to take them straight into that job. Probably the last thing we could add is like an extract to the job. So like just a, a bit of that description that we added in. Um, and that's going to be below all of this. So if you come to grid, and again, press enter on your keyboard. It'll be what we added before. It'll be dynamic content, post, excerpt. And you can see here now the content um, pulling from the first one. And this is just like placeholder. What we're going to do is change this on the right hand side. I might actually set it to a wee bit less just to be a bit more brief. 15. That's looking, aye, that's looking decent. So that's cool. So one more thing I want to do is just tidy this up a wee bit. Maybe add a wee border so that each job is split off. Because if you imagine we've got tons of jobs on that home page, 
we kind of want them separated a wee bit. First thing I'll do is if you click the overall container, that's the reason why I added the container at the top so that we can style everything and keep it inside like a box. I'm pitching a, a really slight border around everything. It's maybe a wee bit rounded. We can maybe add a shadow in there as well. If we come to padding first on the right hand side and we select this link sides, it means every value will be the same. Add 15 pixels of padding here. You can see now if you hover, there's a wee bit of padding just to space everything out from the border. We'll add a one pixel border size. You can see that now. And let's round it so that it's not as blocky. So you can see here that wee wire going round everything now. To keep everything consistent, I'm going to set the height to 250. That's fitting everything in. Let's hit publish and we'll come to the back end again. And we'll go through now to the front page and it doesn't work. And you know why it doesn't work? It's because I didn't set the location and I said I always forget to do that. <laughs> and I've done it again. So here, it's just going to be the same as our, our um, prior with a blog. And I'm going to add a search bar in. So if you also select search results, so you can use the add location rule. So we've got blog and we've got search results. And let's update that. We'll come back here and we'll hit refresh. And it still doesn't work. And do you know why that is? Because I don't. We've got the job archive loading. We didn't set the hook type. So again, this is a content element. A content element, a content template. That is all. So again, we'll hit update. And we'll refresh. And now we see it working. So we're getting there. I don't like how spaced out these are. So I'm going to quickly go in and update this. Right, so I'm going to get rid of some of the spacing. So we can see here by default, it's adding a 25 pixel bottom margin to the headlines which is just kind of a default rule. I'm going to put that to 5 which will be a bit less and these ones are going to be the same. That's a 30. Uh, so I'm just going to, I'm going to make that 5 as well. We need to do it for both of them. Let's make that 5. So that's that's a wee bit better. we are adjust the size of this title as well to something a wee bit smaller. Let's make it a 28 and we'll update. Let's go back to the front. Refresh. And that's a wee bit cleaner. Um, what we're going to do next then is we're going to make this page have two columns as opposed to one. And the way we can do that is by coming back to the customizer. I did say we'd be back in at this again. And if we go back to layout and go to blog this time, this will let us customize both the, the single post, which is when you click into it, and this archive, which shows all of them. So let's go ahead and configure this. So if you come all the way to the bottom, you see columns here. So display posts and columns. That's what we want to do. So we've just selected that and by default it's set it to two. I've kind of styled this with two in mind. You can go for more. Um, I don't really like that. It might work depending on what you're going for. I quite like the two set up here so I'm going to keep it as two and I don't think there's anything else we really need to worry about in here to be honest. Let's have a wee look in the actual post. It's kind of doing the job. You can hit publish just to save it. Tell you what I do want to add in though. I want to add a search bar. So let's do that. So let's come out of the customizer and we can click elements again just to go back here and we'll add another element and you guessed it, it's a block. So let's create another block in its search bar and I'm going to do location first because obviously I'll just forget to set it again. And for the element type, we can keep it as a hook. We want to name it. I'm going to name this after header and that basically means that this block will render after the header and in our case, our header is this white area here. So it's got the name of the site and the navigation um, menu that we've set or not set up here. It's just the default one at the moment. I haven't bothered doing anything there. So I'm going to open the navigator just so you can see what I'm doing. Because we're going to do something a wee bit different here. We're going to set this container first. Inside this first container, you can click this to add in an inner container and that automatically sets the max width of that inner container to be the max width that you declared on your customizer options which if you remember I set that to 1400 pixels so that's 
what I'm after, and it's a, a wee shorthand way of doing it and keeping everything tidy. Now I'm going to add a grid. It's going to be a single column grid, and that will add another container. And this is now where I'm going to add my search bar. So now we've got a search bar. We can see it's going the full width, and it's going to look absolutely ridiculous. And for the case, for the sake of showing you what I mean, let's go back and refresh. And that just looks stupid, man. So let's clean that up. In fact, no, it's growing on me. But but if you click the search bar, and you come over to the right hand side. There's a nice wee option here just to set the width. So I'm setting that to 50%. That's going to look just a wee bit cleaner. So we can get rid of that search text by clicking this wee button here. That's get rid of the text. And let's change the button to be an icon instead. That's a lot cleaner. I quite like that. Um, and we can set optional placeholder text here. So let's just put in something like that. So somebody can type in just whatever the heck they want to do with their job that they're looking for. And now let's go back in, refresh, and aye, that, that looks a lot better. It's just it's a wee bit too close, the header up here. So aye, so let's add a wee bit of space in here. So go back into that element, go to the first container, and let's add a wee margin here. So I'm going to add a 60 pixel margin up the top. And what's it like at the bottom? Could do a wee bit of spacing on the bottom as well. So we'll add a 40 there, click save, go back to the front and refresh. And now there's a wee bit of spacing set out there, so that's a lot better. And we can see here this, are, this will already work. So if I type in IT and we've got IT technician coming up, but we can get rid of these pages by going to posts, delete hello world. And you can see as well the sample page is actually coming up, so we can just delete that. So what you'll see is I just went and populated a few jobs. Just to show you how this would work and look so you've you've got loads of different jobs here now obviously i've added there's tons of jobs and i'm looking for a dog sitter you type in dog hit search and you see the dog sitter job comes up and now i can go in i can see the location type of job it is the pay so there we go that's how you can go about creating a very simple and lightweight job advertisement website and really all that we've used here is the generate press premium theme we use generate blocks we used advanced custom fields in order to just get some of those advanced bits of data such as the pay and the location just to make it easier to pull everything through and then you could put something in here like your application details send cv to such and such email obviously there are more advanced features that we could implement into this website such as a application button where you're able to attach your your cv and everything to the actual job and and, and apply on this website if that makes sense i haven't bothered doing that here just now but if that is something that you would want to see let me know in the comments of this video and i can do an update on this website showing how you can build certain features on top of this so just let me know what you would find to be the most useful so that's everything for now thanks for watching and i'll see you again in the next one cheers